Well, no big strides, but certainly a big push for the dialogue process. That's perhaps what these Thimpu talks will be remembered for. After all, the two prime ministers uh, sat one-on-one -on -one for uh, nearly an hour, we're being told. Uh, and they came away without a joint statement uh, that caused so much controversy after Sharm el-Sheikh. They also came away without any broad agreement on issues. What they seem to agree on uh, really were the broad strokes, uh, the fact that they are resuming their dialogue and upgrading it in a sense uh, to a political level. The foreign secretaries have already been meeting. Now the foreign ministers will meet and discuss the modalities of the talks. Uh, also the two sides making that commitment that neither side's soil will be used against each other. And no return to composite dialogue, something Pakistan has been asking for, but certainly all issues on the table. Let's also try and find out how this is perhaps going to play out in Pakistan. Remember, the differences in perceptions between India and Pakistan uh, seem to, uh, to permeate to the media as well. Let's bring in Memel Sarfaraz. Uh, she is the op-ed editor of the Daily Times. Uh, Memel, um, fr from the Indian point of view, it certainly seems as if it's a realistic statement, something that's taking the process forward. How do you think it's going to play out in Pakistan? Uh, President Zadari and Prime Minister Gilani have always been very serious about talking to India and about the peace process. I mean, when Zadari gave that interview that no new, no use of nukes first. So, I mean, it created quite a controversy in Pakistan because uh, the establishment, it didn't go well down, with, sorry, it didn't go down well with the establishment. Uh, but you see, the political class it has realized that without having a peace process with India, the, uh, we cannot move forward, not economically, not you know peacefully, because the defense budget is so high, we don't have any money left over for the education sector or the healthcare sector or other social sectors. But certainly we'd like, to, uh, we'd, we, we'd, uh, the, the good intent is on both sides, but perhaps it's the nomenclature that everyone gets caught in. Pakistan said time and again they want to return to the composite dialogue. Is it going to be a problem that they haven't agreed to return to the composite dialogue? dialogue just yet. Uh, no, I don't think it will create any problem because the thing is they haven't used the term composite as such, but otherwise, uh, as Shamut Qureshi said, that everything under the sun has been discussed. So, I mean, I think the reason they didn't use the composite, uh, the word composite was because of the Indian side, keeping in mind what Taman Mohan Singh had to face after he came back from Sharm el Sheikh in the Lok Sabha. So, I think it's just because it's just a diplomatic thing and nothing more. All right, certainly that's something we have been seeing uh, uh, from both sides, a desire to stay away from the rhetoric today uh, and really skirt around any minefields, any words like the C word, the B word that could create a problem in this particular bilateral talk.